Well, welcome to session four of our discussion of divine truth. Mary is uh, with me again today and we're going to discuss a few more qualities of divine truth. Remember in the first session we discussed what divine truth was and how it uh, relates or, or how it contrasts to personal truth. We also discussed some of the qualities of divine truth but not in very much detail. Then when we come to the second session we discussed the first seven qualities of divine truth in a lot more detail. So remember these are the qualities of divine truth or God's truth that you can use to determine whether something you see on earth or in the spirit world or in any, in any aspect of life is true or not. And, uh, and so we discussed the first seven qualities in the second yep. session. In the third session, I think we only covered three qualities, actually. <laughs> yes, <laughs> in eight the third, to ten. Eight to ten yep. in the third session. In this session, we're hoping to cover the last uh, four qualities that we wanted to discuss with you, but we're not sure whether we're <laughs> going to get through all of that material either, so we'll just see how we go. <laughs> we get a bit excited about this topic, don't we? Yeah. And talk a bit. Yeah. yeah. So bear in mind that this... All of this material is the basic lead-in material to how you can determine what God's truth is in contrast to what is other people's personal truths, which are not necessarily God's truths. And all of God's truths have these qualities that we've been discussing in these sessions. And so what we'd like to do now is discuss the next four qualities of divine truth if we get that far. So welcome to our discussion and I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> 